as you're probably well aware, when we work in Revit, we tend to get pretty preoccupied with building the model. Uh, what I want to do in this video, though, is talk about some of the other important considerations, the ones that come up when it's time to actually describe the model uh, with some annotations on our sheets. So in order to have some nice, clean, legible, organized sheets, we need a lot of annotations, of course. And uh, part of that would be, on the elevation views, some material tags and a material legend. So in this video, I'm going to just talk about how we can generate some tags that match what you see here and then uh, have a, a legend beside it using a schedule to describe what those numbers correspond to. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using this fairly simple elevation. It's got about a half a dozen different materials on it. And uh, to tag each of those materials, I'm just going to go to the Annotate tab and over here on the Tag panel, just select Material Tag. When I activate this tool and then hover over the different parts of the elevation, you'll see that in some cases I get a description of the material, and in other cases I just see a question mark. Uh, regardless of what I get, I'm going to override that with a number that's going to correspond to what's listed in the legend. So I'll just make that initial click here on the cap flashing. I have to make two clicks to actually place it because it's anticipating that I'm going to have a little bit of a, a bend here in the leader line. So I'll just keep it vertically oriented and enter the first one for the cap flashing, like I said, and then I'll do the second one here for the soldier course brick below it. And I'm not going to get too worried about the placement uh, of each of these leader lines here. Uh, I do have a video that covers graphics and organization of elevation views, and I'll post that in the upper right. So uh, before I go any further though, I'm just gonna do the overrides here on what it gave me by default. So if I make a first click on the question mark and then a second click, it'll allow me to edit that text and I'll just enter 01. And then again, for the brick, I'll just do the second click here and enter 02 to fix that. And then I'll just move through the other four that I wanna tag. So a material tag once again, and I wanna have a tag here for the regular stretcher bond brick. And I'll make that change here just to the list 03. And then I'm going to add another material tag here for the aluminum in the mullion. That, of course, is going to be my 04. I'm just going in sequence here. And then I'll do one for the glass and I'll do one for the spandrel panel. So back to the annotate tab and material tag. And then I'll just click here. Again, I'm just getting a description of the material, but I'm going to disregard that. I will eventually be listing that material description in the legend. Uh, but for now, we're just going to rely on the numbers, of course. This uh, allows me to keep a, a less cluttered view here of the elevation, of course, and not try to have to worry about all that text describing the material that I'd have to squeeze in. Uh, you know, the elevation can obviously get pretty busy if I'm trying to do that. So I'll make my final click here and just pick up a tag for the spandrel panel and we'll call that number 06. So you could proceed with the schedule uh, at this point, um, but I'm gonna do what I've noticed is a little bit more conventional for material tags and that's just to display a little bit of a frame around this. Pretty easy fix to make. All I have to do here is just click on any one of these tags and I'll see that uh, there's a list here of the family file that's generating the graphics for this, and it's actually displaying right here in my type selector. Uh, oftentimes with annotations, if we click on them, we'll have to go into edit type to see what uh, family file is driving the graphics, but in this case, it's actually displayed right here. There's no way to access this file uh, right from the properties window. So what I have to do is just uh, go down here in my browser to the family section, expand that, and go into annotation symbols. And I want to just find my material tag down below here. So if I click on material tag, and I've, and I've made a custom one here with the font that I want, uh, I'll just right click on that and select edit. And now you'll see that it takes me into the, the family editor. You can tell that the name of the file up here is a .rfa file. And all I want to do here is just click on that tag and select edit type. And there's an option here in my type properties window to show the border. So I'll just check that box. I've made a few other edits here. Some things might look a little bit different than what you're seeing on your screen. Uh, I like to have a transparent background. Uh, I like to reduce the leader border offset. And then, as I said, I've also made a change here to the font. But primarily, this was the uh, edit that we were concerned with, just allowing the border to be seen. So I'll click OK. And I'm just going to load this into the project. Select my project file, of course, and then I'll probably get a prompt here about overriding. So uh, I had made that subtle change of just adding the frame around the tag. So I'm just going to take the bottom option here and overwrite the existing version and its parameter values. 
and there we go. So that's the first part, just putting the number, the tag uh, on the elevation. And now what we'll move into is how to display the legend using a schedule. So having simplified our tags, we've got to provide a legend now to describe exactly what these numbers are referring to. And to do that, we're going to create a schedule and we'll go to the view tab and over here on the create panel, we'll select schedules and just take the top option here, schedule quantities. And then on this long list of categories, we're just going to use the multi-category type. And what we're setting up here to do is just to create a generic schedule that's actually going to have some manual input. Uh, this isn't going to be an example of one of those really elaborate uh, Revit schedules. We're not going to be uh, getting into really complex parameters and properties. We're just going to keep this simple and make it one that we can enter manually. Uh, we don't have a field here available to us that's going to work for what we want. So we're just going to go to the new parameter option down below here, the little sheet with the spark. And in the parameter properties window that pops up, we're just going to type in under name, MTL for material, of course, and just tag. This is going to be a text type of parameter, which just allows us again to enter whatever we want in those fields when we see the schedule. And over here on the right, we want everything to be eligible. So we're just going to click check all and we'll click OK and repeat the process for another parameter. So once again, the little spark uh, here next to the sheet and under parameter uh, data name, we're going to enter material. And then once again, under type of parameter, we're going to select text and we're going to check all the categories over here and click OK. Now, when we click OK to complete this, it's going to take us right to that schedule, but you'll see it's going to be pretty much empty. We're not going to have anything in there at all. And what we want to do, as I said, is just enter some fields manually. So we're going to type in 01 and then just hit the tab key and go to the next one here. And the material for this is going to be our metal cap flashing. And then I'll just work my way through here. So I'm just going to populate all these fields. I'll speed up the video and we'll get to the end and then we'll talk about some of the cleanup that we need to do to make this look uh, a little bit more appropriate. So I've added the additional fields as you can see, and there's just a little bit of final cleanup that's needed here with the schedule. Uh, for example, we've got a long sort of list here of empty fields and to limit it to just the fields that we've populated manually we just have to click over here on one of these options available in the properties window we'll click on filter and uh, anytime we hit any of these buttons of course we have access to all of those same buttons over here uh, in the schedule properties window here by just clicking on these various tabs we've already completed the fields tab so on filter we're just going to select here filter by material tag and under this next field, we'll just specify that we want the ones that have values only. So we'll click OK. Now you can see it edits uh, all those empty fields out. Uh, in addition to that, we've also got a little bit of sorting to do. Uh, we've already got it sort of uh, arranged here by material tag number. But if that wasn't the case, we would just want to specify that it was being sorted by material tag in an ascending order. And that will ensure that one's on the top and six is on the bottom. Uh, we'll move next to formatting. And this is where we can uh, specify some options here about how we justify the text and such. We might want to, for example, under material tag, just have the uh, alignment be centered. And if I click OK, you'll see what that does. And then the last thing that we'd want to do here is just play around with the appearance. And this is where we can make some changes to the line work and the font sizes and such. I can, for example, instead of just going with the default, uh, specify that I want my title text to be a little larger. My header text can be even uh, a little bit larger still than the rest and then the body text can just be specified at something a little smaller. Uh, I do have some other options here that can kind of enhance the graphics a little bit like for example I can add a little bit of a tone here to my uh, offset or my odd numbered uh, fields and that might just help out with, uh, with legibility here as you can see. So personal preference that's just kind of graphic um, options that you can explore. Uh, the last thing that I want to do here is just change the title and that is being determined here just by the default that it gave me right from the start. And I can change that by just right clicking here on multi category schedule and clicking rename and just typing in as you would expect materials legend. Now that I've done that, uh, I'm ready to put this on a sheet. So you'll see it update. And now what I'll do is I'll go back to the elevation here and uh, place that on a sheet and uh, appears there as you can see. And then it's just a simple matter of dragging and dropping. So I'll just click over here in the browser on Materials Legend and drag it over and uh, do my best here to get some proper alignment here with the, the elevation. 
Um, but the fine tuning, um, you can see here that I've got some options here that will allow me to pull around these little grips here and change the width of these various columns. That's going to be just kind of a personal preference thing. But that's how we uh, relatively quickly generate some material tags here for our elevations and have a matching legend to describe exactly what those numbers are all about. Hope you found that helpful. And uh, if you like what you've heard, please consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next video.